Broadcasting the information the mainstream media won't touch. This is The Richie Allen Show in association with DavidIke.com. What's been going on then? First of all, today anyway, there's not much point in me talking about Donald Trump's immigration plans. I'll tell you why. I've had quite a bit to say on it on Sunday View and even yesterday, but you've been hearing about it and reading about it all day long, and I'm guessing you're probably sick to the back teeth of it. Now, that's a great Irish saying that. Sick to the back teeth. I'm sick to the back teeth of whatever you're sick to the back teeth of. So there's been a debate today at Westminster in that place. MPs are actually sitting until midnight for a marathon debate on Brexit. As you know by now, Theresa May was forced to allow the debate by the Supreme Court, which said last week MPs must vote before invoking Article 50, which begins the process of leaving the European Union. The debate was opened by the Brexit Secretary, David Davis. OK, we'll hear from him in a second. But the bill's very short length and the timetable has prompted fury among MPs who want longer to scrutinise it before the 31st of March. There's also fury over the delay of a Brexit white paper detailing the government's plans. A lot of fury around. Some MPs have have said that they are going to vote against Article 50 no matter what, including some Labour MPs and even three whips. Some have quit the front bench to defy a whip from Jeremy Corbyn for our overseas listeners who know nothing about parliamentary standards and procedures. Procedures here. Uh, Well, the whip is basically MPs being told by their party leader how they must vote. And each party has a whip. And a whip is a person, an MP chosen to email and ring and speak to the MPs and say, you're going to vote this way today. Anyway, Brexit Secretary David Davis, in his speech today, reminded Parliament that, well, the public should be sovereign, the public voted to leave and we should honour that. So at the core of this bill lies a very simple question. Do we trust the people or not? The democratic mandate is clear. The electorate voted for a government to give them a referendum. Parliament then voted to hold the referendum. The people voted in that referendum. And we are now honouring the result of that referendum. As we said we would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, and I voted for the first time in donkey's years last June 23rd. And I took a picture of it, put it out there, and I was told that was illegal and all that garbage. But... Yes, we voted to leave, didn't we? Now, Michael Gove, the... What's he the former? <laughs> is he the former Justice Minister? Is he, is he the former Is he former Defence Secretary? Even I get confused, and I know this stuff usually off by heart. Well, Gove had a pop. We know he lost the leadership contest to Theresa May. Gove had a pop at the Scottish National Party. He called them raucous populists who are anti-democracy. I know he... I know, the, I know the response from the SNP, who are the prime traders in raucous populism and the politics of division. But if we were now to reject the considered decision of 17.4 million of our fellow citizens, we would only be feeding the disaffection with the democratic process that in other countries has led to unfortunate results. That is why, again, my right honourable friend, the member for West Dorset, was right. We should respect the result and honour the mandate. And I note that there are a number of people who ask now for white papers and scrutiny and greater clarity. We've already had a promise of a white paper. We've had a 6,000 word speech from our Prime Minister. We've had clarity in all of these issues. There are people who not only won't take yes for an answer, they are people who are not seeking clarity, they are seeking obfuscation, delay and a dilution of the democratic mandate of the British people. Rubbish! Did you hear that plonker shouting, rubbish! There's nothing rubbish about it. Gove is detestable, as are, well, all MPs of his ilk, but his sentiments are absolutely spot on. Look, they don't want us to leave the European Union. And by they, I even mean people like Gove. And maybe not Gove specifically, but many of them champion, championing the exit of the UK and championing the result are actually double actors. They're players. 
they don't want the UK to leave the European Union. It is devastating for the one world government agenda and for the centralisation of power. Now on that, Donald Tusk stuck his big ugly head above the parapet today. I don't know what he looks like. He might... <laughs> I've seen him enough times, but I can't picture him. He might be gorgeous. Donald Tusk is the European Council President. He's warned that worrying declarations from US President Donald Trump are among the challenges faced by the European Union. He said the change in, in Washington was part of an external threat as it also included an assertive China and aggressive Russia and radical Islam. Tusk wrote to 27 European leaders and he said he believed that most of the European leaders agreed with him. RT are covering the story. Our top story then, the EU faces a new threat and that's apparently Donald Trump's US. That warning comes from none other than the European Council's President Donald Tusk. Our Europe correspondent Peter Oliver has more than... Trump's U.S. is among the external threats to the EU, along with China, Russia and radical Islam. The EU must take spectacular steps to preserve the Union. Disintegration would leave European states dependent on the U.S., Russia and China. Right, simple as that. Russia, China, the U.S. now, that was Donald Tusk. Look, they're properly terrified about other countries following the UK's lead and voting to leave the European Union. You know, the Dutch are going to vote. Who else is going to vote? Will there be another revolt in Greece against the criminals Alexis Tsipras and, um, and the Greek government? We've covered this extensively in the last six or eight months. You know what? We think there's no point in me labouring the point. Now, tens of thousands, speaking of Donald Trump, tens of thousands of people around the country, maybe hundreds of thousands, marched yesterday saying that Donald Trump should not be allowed a state visit to the UK later this year. A petition has been signed by over 1.7 million people. This distresses me because whatever you think about Donald Trump doesn't matter a damn whether he comes to visit the UK or not. I mean, I was thinking today, in fact, I was thinking out loud. People were looking at me. I was walking around the supermarket. I was actually thinking out loud. And a woman looked at me. I realised I was speaking. In my mind, I was thinking, food banks, the terminally ill being forced to work. The terminally ill being forced to work. The criminalisation of homeless people. Illegal wars. The destruction of Yemen. All these things people have never marched in protest against. At least not on the scale we saw yesterday anyway. And so much of that is to do with identity politics, isn't it? I'm a woman and Trump hates women, so I'm going to march. Well, you're a mother as well. You're a mother as well. Imagine your child being homeless. Eh? Imagine your 25-year-old son dying of cancer and getting his benefits stopped and having to find work. Get your priorities right, folks, you know? Listen, I ain't a hypocrite. I don't deny those people who marched yesterday their right to march against whatever they deem worthy of marching against. But I don't deny myself the right to criticise them and to ask, what about all these other more important things you might have, you know, you might have marched against? 14 minutes past the hour. Now, a parliamentary inquiry started work today to look into how to deal with fake news. Damien Collins, the Conservative MP, is heading up the inquiry. He's the chairman. He said, the rise of propaganda and fabrication is a threat to democracy and undermines confidence in the media in general. Now, I emailed Damien Collins today to invite him on the programme and to recommend that he invite David Icke to give evidence to the inquiry. This is serious, you see. Because there is a glaring difference between your news wire run by the despicable, the awful, the pathetic, miserable excuse for a human being, Sean Adel. A world of difference between that and real, independent, cutting-edge media. And I mentioned in a very, you know, open and candid email to uh, Damien Collins that there are cutting-edge men and women doing work on 
globalization, false flag terrorism, uh, Monsanto. I mightn't have mentioned Monsanto today, but Zionism, central banking and the creation of money. These are important things. These are things we don't hear on the mainstream media. And these people shouldn't be worried about being labelled as fake news. So I emailed them, I asked them to consider, and I understand a lot of people have asked them to consider inviting David Icke to speak or to give evidence to that inquiry. I haven't yet received a response, but I only sent the email today. We'll give him a day or two to see if he get back to me. This is a very serious story. This is major, and of course we'll be covering it, and we will be on top of it in the coming weeks as it gathers pace. And finally for the moment, the Boy Scouts of America announced that they will accept applications to join from transgender children. Yes, here's Fox Action 41 News with the story. I love this. Fox 41 Action. I love these stations' names. Well, anyway, here they are with the story. This gets my goat, this. Now, girls who identify as boys can now be part of the program. 41 Action News reporter Belinda Post is live at the Scout Shop in Kansas City with more on this decision to open the door to transgender children. Belinda? Well, Patrick and Lindsay, before your child could only participate if they were listed as a boy on their birth certificate, but now Boy Scouts of America is actually looking at the application, so that's going to be what the parents put down as the child's gender. Now, organizers say that the reason is simple. It's because they want to reach as many children, families, and communities as possible. Now, that's good news for kids like 8-year-old Joe Maldonado, who last year was asked to leave his troop when parents and troop leaders found out he was transgender. I want them to be comfortable with how I am and what my destiny is and what my identity is. Well, this change brings Boy Scouts of America in line with other youth service organizations. In fact, Girl Scouts of America came out publicly in favor of transgender policies back about six years ago. Reporting live in Kansas City, Belinda Post, 41 Action News Today. The world is mad. I'm going to say nothing other than that was a seven-year-old kid, a boy, talking about gender identity. The Boy Scouts of America have said that the Boy Scouts will now take applications from transgender children. I say what I said last week when we interviewed Joseph Berger. Why now? Why all of this right across the media when people identifying as transgender would make up such a tiny, 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 tiny fraction of your community population. What's going on? Hey? Eh?